welcome to the Marketing 101 for Small Business Owners podcast channel. We've started a new series called the MoCo Business Buzz, and that's Montgomery County for people not in the Montgomery County, Maryland area. We call ourselves MoCo for short. And I started this new series really with the hopes and expectations of giving other small businesses the opportunity, one, to just get their name out there, an opportunity to shine, as well as an opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about what people are really struggling with in marketing, um, what they're happy about with marketing, and give me an opportunity to share. So today I have a special guest, Daniel. And Daniel, I apologize if I say your last name wrong. I was practicing it, but I'm like, no. <laughs> it's so good. Say it again. It's Garadu. Okay. Okay. I was going to say Garadu. Okay. But thank you. All right. Hey, that works too. <laughs> okay. Perfect. All right. So Daniel, so please tell us a little about, about yourself, about your company, where you work yes. and how you got into it. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much uh, for the time. Uh, uh, well, yeah, my name is Daniel Garadu. I uh, am with Star Financial, my our firm uh, that I uh, am a part owner of, and I also have my own merchant services industry as well. And the first question I usually get is, what exactly is merchant services? So that's credit card processing. So businesses that accept credit cards uh, from their customers, whether it's in person or online, we help with all of that. Uh, whether it is uh, a credit card um, processing, we help. We also provide the equipment uh, and help train uh, the staff and really build that relationship with, with that business. We want to understand that business, how they're accepting credit cards, how they maybe were accepting credit cards and how we can maybe improve that. Uh, there are a lot of technological improvements and changes that are always happening. So it's our, it's our job and our goal to find the best fit and also to give them the best value as well. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And now do you focus on the more hands-on part of this? So providing the equipment and the training, do you also help with policies to making sure that they're using it legally they're not adding extra fees because you know I, I know credit cards processing unless you guys offer free you know no fee services I highly doubt it people are always trying to find ways around those fees so do you kind of help make sure they're not doing anything that they shouldn't be doing yeah absolutely that's a great point you know in our industry uh everyone is is trying to make the sale and move on to the next account well, that's not necessarily the case with us. Of course, we do want to make a sale, but we also want to make sure that the business is accepting credit cards in a compliant manner. So one thing that we see quite a bit and we're able to really add value and, and save a lot of headaches for, for our clients is by uh, taking out or, or providing up-to-date compliant uh, payment terminals. So one thing that we see quite a bit is a lot of businesses accept credit cards and they swipe the card. So remember the old school swiping with the magnetic strip so nowadays, businesses should not be doing that at all. Uh, what can happen is any business that does that, the customer can literally call the number on their back of their credit card and say it wasn't them. And, and that credit card company will charge the business. So yeah. credit card companies are trying to avoid that. It's a very risky uh, uh, fraud typically happens by, by that swipe. So we want to encourage our customers uh, and tell them and educate them. Uh, about that. So that's, again, part of that education, part of that, that relationship is informing uh, our, our clients how we can help and, and ways that they can save a lot of, of headaches. And then going back to your point about the equipment, yeah, we can provide free equipment as well. Uh, so there are certain uh, situations where, where a business maybe is starting out, has uh, a lot of funds that they've allocated for, you know, investment and, 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 uh, and so credit cards, equipment, can be pricey and it's something that typically a lot of businesses as they're starting out maybe don't think about per se and have funds set aside for that. So we can work with a client and make it uh, and, and provide them the equipment they need uh, for free. And uh, and so we can find, like I said, it's all about finding you know how we can help that business. And we want ultimately when, when that business does well, we do well. So we're, we're all on the same page there. Awesome. So you, so you please can at some level play the role of a consultant as well, being able yes. to have the opportunity to say, well, based on your business and the way you interact with customers, yes. here's the equipment you should probably use. Absolutely. I had a question too about the um, 
no swipe. So if, if a company is still offering swipes, what are the alternatives? So when we're saying no swiping, because yeah, there are still a lot of pe- companies that have the swipe. Um, what should we be looking for? What, what's the other method? Is it manually entering the information? Uh, no, not, not manually entering, but more so uh, the tapping or the chip. So they call that EMV technology, E like Echo, M like Mary, B like Victor. Uh, so these are more compliant and, and more up-to-date uh, features that are available when, when accepting credit card payments. So, so that is where we're steering our clients towards. All of our clients have, have EMV equipment. They're all uh, compliant. We don't offer anything else for our clients. So we want to make sure they're, they're compliant from the very beginning uh, when they begin working with us. So, so that's something that we encourage. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And I think you said, like you mentioned earlier, customers being able to just call their bank and saying it wasn't me and business is losing money that way. But I can also see this as a benefit for the consumers as well. It sounds like these, these methods, the tap and the chip are a little better in terms of avoiding identity fraud and people swiping their credit card information using like those, I guess those little add on machines they put on. Yeah. Yeah, skimmers. Um, yeah. If you're tapping, it's, there's, there's, I guess there's not as much hacking technology for that yet. <laughs> that, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, hopefully for a while. And, and if and when that happens, we'll move on to newer technology, I suppose, yes. right? <laughs> yes, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, all right, so now the, the heart of the conversation, I would love to know, based on your experience so far with the company, I mean, you said you're also one of the founders, so I'm sure you've had to use some marketing tactics along the way. Can you tell me something that you've done um, with marketing that you felt has been successful in getting you either leads or customers or at least awareness? Yeah, absolutely. So we we've done a few different things, uh, and we've we've uh, done Facebook uh, campaigns, we've done uh, LinkedIn uh, some campaigns, ads, videos, and and different information that we provide uh, about our services, educating our our customers and also. Uh, potential customers and other business uh, colleagues and centers of influence that we work with about uh, really our our capabilities and where we stand apart. There are a lot of companies that are out there that do similar things that we do. Uh, it's important for 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 us to explain how we kind of go a step beyond and and offer uh, kind of that old school customer service support. So a lot of the competition is going more towards online. Think of your, your PayPal's, your, your stripes, everything is, you know, call 1-800, you know, and, and you're, you're not going to have a dedicated, uh, an account manager or someone that really understands your business and and what you're doing. So it's important for us to, to explain that to everyone. So they know that they're getting, getting something different from us. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So that means, well, I'm assuming then that a lot of your customers then are local facing people you can drive to and, and coordinate with, but can you still offer the same services to somebody in say California or Tennessee from here? Absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, we can definitely do that. So we have clients in about 30, 30 states all over the country. Okay. Uh, so we can definitely provide a uh, service, the same, uh, you know, same level of service as well as providing the equipment and all of that, you know, we're in the 21st century. So I've had, you know, we've had plenty of Zoom meetings with clients uh, and providing uh, demonstrations of our equipment and, and uh, over over Zoom as well. Uh, we'll fly out to customers as well as needed and, and make sure that we're still providing that same level of, of support and care, uh, no matter where that where that client is. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. And then now on the other side of things, I'm sure throughout your journey, you've tried some marketing things that didn't work as expected or things you've wanted to try and just haven't got it off the ground, lack of resources, lack of skills, lack of knowledge. Is there anything, any marketing struggles you've had that you want to share? Yeah. So one thing that I really want to educate myself on and, and find uh, what is available is, is AI uh, and how that is changing so many industries and, and my, you know, ours as well, you know, so we, I want to try to be on the forefront of that and really use it to my benefit as opposed to kind of reacting to it. And, 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 you know, so, so that's really one thing that I, I would like to, to work on and improve. It's, um, it's something that is kind of this, you know, elephant in the room. So the more that I know and can educate myself and, 
and that would allow us to really use it to its capabilities to because I, I think it's wonderful and it's such a such a powerful tool. It's almost like, you know, the internet when that when it was, you know, in its infancy, I feel like it's going to be a huge, huge game changer. It is. And and honestly, AI has exploded in the last few months, you know, in terms of popularity and awareness, but it's been around for a little bit. And there, there are a few tools that have been in existence and being actively using that are using AI um, capabilities. And so there's a, several different ways I can think of for you to be able to tap into some of the AI tools. And, and I'm sure you're familiar with chat GPT um, that can certainly help with development, you know, a lot of text-based, you know, information, but you can do charts as well um, in chat GPT. And my suggestion when it comes to that tool specifically and any other uh, AI writing tool is, is use it as, I guess, maybe like a, I guess a first step, a first step in, in a, like, say you're going to write a blog post or you're going to write a social media ad. Um, use it as the foundation to say, okay, give me direction, but then you always want to massage it and make it your own. Don't just use, you know, copy and paste, say I'm done and post it. You want to just use it as the foundation of the writing, but then still add your own language into it. Um, for me as a service provider, providing marketing support, it's important because right now I'm still the face of my company. I'm working on putting in the processes so it's not just me running the company and 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 I'm able to sell the company eventually and expand. But for now, when it comes to branding and identity, I have to put myself out there a lot to connect with people in my business. And so that means all the marketing material needs to sound like I said it. So if I started using chat, B, chat GPT to put out content, people will know right away, like that's not what Philippa would say or how she would say it. Um, but also not just for me as an individual, but as a brand, you may have several people work in your company. So there's not just one tone of voice, but the brand has a tone of voice. And if the brand has always said things a certain way, and then all of a sudden you start using AI and you lose your tone of voice, regular customers may notice right away, like something's changed, either somebody has changed or this doesn't seem right. Um, so that's, that's one obvious tool. There's other tools like Canva has a lot, Canva is an AI tool as well, and it has a lot of um, visual capabilities. Um, I had thought of one when you were saying, oh, the, a lot of people use AI, and I know you were just mentioning this in terms of moving online and being a little disconnected and, and not being a direct connection with your clients. And so this is maybe a step in the other direction of that, where they do offer a lot of AI tools that give you the capabilities of putting like a little chat bot um, on your website to answer questions. But that could be good, even though even though you have a certain relationship with your with your customers and your clients, you build relationships with them and you're available to meet face to face. But sometimes for people just getting started, those chat bots may be good for them to, maybe they're not ready to talk yet. Maybe they're still doing some research and those chat bots can answer a couple questions before they make that phone call. Um, so those are a, a lot of times are AI generated. You have to kind of input, do the work ahead of time to kind of input the right responses. Um, but it could help um, at least get somebody, somebody who is thinking about it, kind of give them like a confidence of like, okay, maybe this is the right company. And then they'll make the move to call or email or whatever your call to action is. Yeah, exactly. No, I think that's, that's excellent ad advice. And I, I think that is definitely something that I feel we can, we can use to leverage uh, what our operations currently. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Daniel, I appreciate your time and showing up. How can people learn more about you, your company, follow you? Absolutely. Yes. So you can uh, read more uh, our website, www.gowithstar.com. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn uh, and uh, I'm happy to chat uh, further. Uh, my information, contact information is available there. Uh, I'll also in include it here. So it's my first initial D, my last name, which is G-A-R-E-D-E-W at gowithstar.com. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate it. And best of luck with the growth and expansion of the company. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great to be here.